from Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Jonathan Jones reporting. Somalia's police chief and intelligence chief have both been fired after an Al-Shabaab siege of a hotel in the capital Mogadishu left at least 27 people dead. The country's Minister of Information confirmed the dismissals and told VOA what was expected of the security agencies was that the necessary intelligence and surveillance information should have stopped this truck. It will be the second time the two officials were fired from the same positions. A pre-dawn Taliban attack in northern Afghanistan has killed at least 13 government forces. Officials reported the heavily armed insurgents raided a police outpost in the Khan Abad district of the troubled Kunduz province and inflicted the casualties. The Taliban quickly took credit for the attack, claiming ensuing clashes killed 17 Afghan police personnel, and their, including their commander, and left an insurgent fighter dead. The Taliban said the insurgents also captured the security outpost. Protesters in Erbil stormed the parliament building Sunday after Iraqi Kurdish leader Masoud Barzani announced he is stepping down as president of the self-ruled northern Kurdish region. Angry Kurds attacked members of parliament and journalists inside the building, while a crowd outside waved Kurdish flags in support of Barzani. In a televised speech, he announced his resignation as of the 1st of November. He asked parliament to dissolve the position of president and distribute its duties among the Kurdish prime minister, parliament, and the judiciary. This is VOA News. The UN Children's Fund is warning that potentially life-threatening malnutrition is soaring among Rohingya refugee children who have fled to Cox's Bazaar, Bangladesh, to escape violence and abuse in Myanmar. Correspondent Lisa Schlein reports for VOA from Geneva. The UN Children's Fund does not know the extent of acute malnutrition among Rohingya child refugees. So UNICEF spokeswoman Marixi Mercado says a nutrition survey is underway that will provide vital data when it is completed in November. What we already know is that the combination of malnutrition, sanitary conditions and disease in the refugee settlements is potentially catastrophic for children. More than 600,000 Rohingya refugees have arrived in Cox's Bazaar since August 25th to escape violence and persecution in Myanmar's northern Rakhine state. Children comprise nearly 60% of the refugees. Lisa Schlein for VOA News, Geneva. Tension is high in a remote village in western Kenya after the body of an elderly man was discovered Sunday on a farm. Mohamed Youssef reports for VOA from Koguta, Kenya. The body of an elderly man lies on the ground outside Koguta village, surrounded by angry men armed with spears, machete, bows and arrows. They are angry about the killing. The death of the man came a day after two communities promised to end the hostilities caused by months of political uncertainty. Koguta sits between the Kalenjin community that supports President Uhuru Kenyatta and the Luo community that is loyal to opposition leader Raila Odinga. The brother of the victim says enemies are trying to push the Luo off their ancestral land. They do not want us here. This is where I was born and my father was born here. These people came here just the other day. They have not even been here for three years. They are the ones who have killed my brother. Correspondent Mohamed Youssef, Kenyan opposition leader Raila Odinga is demanding a new presidential election within 90 days. He says the country is in, quote, grave danger from political violence. He spoke to the Associated Press three days after he boycotted Thursday's rerun of the August election, whose results were themselves thrown out by the Supreme Court because of irregularities. Odinga called Thursday's vote invalid because President Uhuru Kenyatta faced no opposition. He said the president is trying to destroy other institutions of governance in Kenya. There's more on these and other late-breaking and developing stories from around the world, around the clock, at voanews.com and on the VOA News mobile app. I'm Jonathan Jones reporting from the world headquarters of the Voice of America in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.